Pro fans, yeah, welcome to another episode on Pro Basketball. Um, today's episode is a very interesting one because how the West is going, we definitely need to talk about it. My name is Slimo. I'm, I'm joined by Teddy today. And for this episode, we'll be speaking about the wild, wild West. How difficult it is to get into play playoff sports. In fact, the playing is even really, really tricky. Now, for the top 10 in the West, it's very, very interesting. Starting off at uh, the top of the tree, the Minnesota Timbers just shocking everybody. Currently on a four-game winning streak. They've been doing impressively. And I think that win against the Clippers kind of sounded the alarm and brought everybody's attention to them. What do you make of the stats they've had to this season? Very, 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 very big win. Uh, so they have uh, two big men in their starting lineup. They have Nas Reed as their backup. And Antonio Edwards, like I said, after the FIBA World Cup has been amazing. The identity of this team is defense. So I have a little bit of stats for Rudy. So he's number eight when it comes to blocks this season. Number two in offensive rebounds. Number four in defensive rebounds. And Mike Conley, the, the, the impact number 14 is crazy. assists this season. It's, it's amazing how now it's, they found how to play together because last season we saw how Rudy wasn't able to play with with Cat yeah, exactly. because Cat was moved from the four from the five to the four and he was finding how to play. But now it's like everyone knows what they what they, they need to do and everyone is doing it amazingly. And but for every single one of these teams, I feel like there's one weakness and there's one question that everybody asks. Because they are half-court offense, when it slows things down a bit, um, they are not as prolific as other teams. People are asking if Queen's Finch can get them going in the playoffs. We'll see how that turns out for them. Now, at number two, the OKC Thunder. The man, uh, Shea Gildos Alexander, pushing his team to heights we didn't expect them to reach. Because coming into this season, we didn't expect the Thunder to do as great as they are doing now. But, uh, I mean, what Shea is doing right now, putting himself in MVP conversations, what do you make of this young team going into the playoffs? For them... They have three guards line up. That's they have um, Shea, they have Giddy, and they have Dot. So that's like size disadvantage for them. And there's there's lack of lack of experience when they get into the playoffs. Like you said, when everything is slowed down for them, how can you stand? Because most of these teams coming into the playoffs, they've been there, they've done that. Maybe, maybe they've gone all the way. Some not all the way, but now they have a little bit of experience. Now this is a young core team coming into the playoffs, and then they have to show us what they can do. We are seeing what um, Shea is doing, but is it enough to move the whole team to win it? They've added players like Biombo. They've added uh, Gordon Hayward, but maybe some veteran experience. For there, Hayward, there to push it's them. more of health issues. For Biombo, okay, he had size, but is it enough? Exactly. And for all these teams, I, I said earlier that they've got questions around them. In third place coming in is the Los Angeles Clippers, a team where after they, they got James Harden on, on the table, everybody knew they were championship contenders. And they've been quite proving it since the Zimba Fest. They've been winning games. I think one of the best offenses in the NBA, but the size, the size, the size. I mean, when we faced um, the Timberwolves, you could tell, rebounding wise, we were in there. Maybe you could call it a box out problem, but the size is still a huge problem. Facing teams like the Pelicans or the Timberwolves will definitely give us problems. And of course, the champions, the Denver Nuggets in yeah. fourth place. I mean, this team has time and time again proven to us that they can go all the way. Last year, we saw what they did to Miami in the finals. But this year, with um, the bench lineup not being the best as it was yeah. from last year, do you still feel Nikola Jokic and Murray have enough to go maybe to the conference finals or maybe win it all? I think again? I tweeted this, that their starting lineup, fine, they are good. But with their bench production, because last season they had Bruce Brown, they had um, Uncle Jeff. Uncle Jeff. Mm -hmm. They were producing big numbers. Uh, Bruce Brown was averaging like 15 points and then uh, Uncle Jeff also 15 plus. So, but this this lineup, they have uh, Brian Brown, mm. they have Watson, they have um, Ru Energy. Who maybe are not tried and tested yet. Six so points per game, four points per exactly. game. It's, it's, it's not enough. So I have a problem with their, with their second bench because when uh, the non-Yokish moments or the non-Yokish time minutes, yeah. minutes Someone has to step in, and then I can. It's it's Reggie Jackson, but he's not so reliable. So that's that's the problem I have with them. They are second. For, for the second Nuggets, team. we'll see how they turn things around. But I think the most tricky tricky team is at fifth place, the Phoenix Suns. They put together a trio that everybody was licking their lips with what they can do offensively. KD, Booker, and Bill. But the supporting cast are they good enough? They didn't start the season well, but now their players are healthier, winning games. They're on the two game winning streak. They've come into fifth place with thirty three wins. Mm. The Phoenix. 
Suns look like they could be a danger very, when very, it comes very, into very, the playoffs. Very. I'm sure nobody wants to face them. And At sixth position comes in uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. Also six games behind first place Minnesota Timberwolves. Of course, um, Zion and then Ingram are the two stars going in. They've got um, a veteran point guard at CJ McCollum, but we still speak of experience. They've got size. When they want to match you with size, they can do it and I feel like they're one of those danger teams to watch out for. Now, the most intriguing part of this all is the seventh to tenth place where we've got the playing spots. Yeah. Playing, you have to come in and in one game, you have to show us what you can do and maybe experience can come for those teams. At seventh place, Probably the most impressive team in that playing spot. They're on a six-game winning streak, the Dallas Mavericks. The additions are the trade deadline. Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington, I feel like, has taken them to another level. Very you feel maybe Luca and Doncic might just uh, make a big run this year. Because they, they got Luca, uh, they got Kyrie last year. Um, this year, it feels like this is their time to maybe shine. But maybe the West is too difficult for them. Do you feel they have enough to maybe just make some noise in the playoffs? They, they do have enough because Luca hasn't had um, a rim protector in the name like someone like Gafford. He had Lively, mm -hmm. but now he has Gafford who has the experience, who has the size. to, And, and he has... He, he knows what to do at, at, at in every pos in every possession. And you, we brought in P.J. Washington. P.J. Washington, I think um, when he, was, he wasn't in, in Mavs, they... He wasn't doing some of the assignments he was doing. He's doing now in Mavs. In Mavs, in, the, in his first game, he was asked to um, defend the best player on the opposing team, and that is something that they need. Cause Luca is not a good defender. Kyrie is not a good defender. So now they have someone like Gafford and they have someone like PJ Washington to do most of the defensive works. And I think and I know with the kind of numbers. Luca has been producing the kind of mm. numbers we know Kyrie can produce with him try, not try, being try to test their players <laughs> with <laughs> him not doing his shenanigans. Ah, they're good, they can go the long way. Well, it will be interesting to see what the Mavericks do. Now, the last three teams, the Sacramento Kings, who have kind of fallen off a bit. Very. When when the season started, they were on that fourth and fifth spot. Now they've dropped down to eight. It just tells you how competitive it is. Even with Sabonis playing at an all-time level, averaging triple doubles. There, he's the one that's gotten a lot of triple doubles this year, and it will be interesting to see if uh, Daron Fox and then Sabonis can carry them maybe past the first round. Last year, we saw them against the Warriors in the first round. It didn't go well for them. Now, the last two teams, probably the biggest teams in the conference, the teams with the most history in the conference. We've got the LA Lakers with LeBron James and Anthony Davis kind of holding the fort. We've seen the fans complain about Davin Ham, Davin Ham, Davin Ham. <laughs> but they are good now. Three games on the bounce. They are in ninth position. They look healthy. I mean, some of the players are stepping up. We've seen Hachimura That's play well lately. Laker fans, are you happy with your team now? Do you feel you guys have what it takes to make some noise? Maybe when they pay it with the Timberwolves or OKC Tanda, you can do something. And finally, the Golden State Warriors, who have just found something working for yeah. them. In their last 10 games, 8-2 and two record. I mean, Steph Curry has come back to the Stephen Curry we know. They are, they are getting more points in the paint, which I feel like is very, very important for them because when you rely too much on the jump shots, it can hurt you. Very you cool. feel... Um, where they are now, they could really cause an upset because they are definitely in those lower spots where they could face higher, higher seats, seats in the yeah. playoffs. You think maybe an upset could, could, could be playing in here? First of all, they have the experience. They, they, they've been doing this for so long. And in 2020, we, we didn't see them coming and then they came and then they won the whole thing. And then the, there's this thing where Steve Kerr wasn't trying to understand that Kuminga needs to start. And now, and now Kuminga is the second option on the team. Now they have some of their, their rookies in the lineups mm -hmm. But the problem I have with them is size. You have Jamal Green playing the five, which is a problem. Because if you meet a team like the Minnesota, who they have two bigs. If they if they they, they plan to to clog or to 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 cause traffic in the in the in the interior for you, you have to do it. You have to do it. Cut. You have to do it, Rudy. And there's so much there's so much you can do when it's only one big, but when it's two bigs, mm. and then now everything is moving to two bigs. So I have that problem. Mm -hmm. Size by experience. The Golden State Warriors. Maybe if Clay Thompson picks it up a bit, we'll see what uh, the 2022 champions can do. But that's the whole rundown of how the Western Conference is looking like, as tight as it is going into the All Star break. It would definitely be interesting to see how the season ends. Who do you have coming out of the West? Who do you think is the biggest threat to the Denver Nuggets? That's how we'll be closing this one out. It's been an interesting episode running through the whole of the teams definitely the playoffs will have more detailed analysis on how these teams look to plan things out and maybe lift the larry o'brien trophy this is how we'll close the basketball session out make sure you, uh, you hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying these videos we are out for now we'll see you some other time